All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Entrepreneur Ecosystem Coffee Break on July 8th, 2021. Um, bring your greetings from the beautiful community of Pasadena, Newfoundland, and Labrador on the West Coast, on the unceded territory of the Beothic, uh, adjacent to Mi'kmaq lands, and also recognizing the Innu and Inui in our province. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Carol Spicer and I'm the owner of Spicer Facilitation and Learning. I'm very happy to be with you here today for our monthly Entrepreneur Ecosystem Coffee Break on behalf of Navigate Small Business. My partner in crime, Allison, is unavailable today, so I'm going to be flying solo, um, but I'll be giving uh, her information as we go through. And today's uh, session, uh, for those that are unaware, we do offer a monthly coffee break for entrepreneurs to connect with one another. The last few uh, sessions we've had, we've had a lot of information from our support system, um, from all the agencies that guide us and support us as entrepreneurs. And this time we're turning it over to the entrepreneurs. Uh, so we're doing a little bit of a virtual tour we're going to book in the summer. We know that folks are busy, so we've gone early in July and our next coffee break will be late in August um, so that we can keep our monthly, but we're, we're kind of giving everybody the summer because uh, we know for some that's a very, very busy time and we know for others it's time to, to kind of relax and step back a little bit. So we don't want to infringe on that either. So I bring you uh, uh, greetings, hello, welcome, bonjour à tous, quoi. I'd um, like to uh, give you the opportunity to introduce yourselves and we're going to do a little virtual tour today. So um, at any point, I encourage you to put your contact information in chat. Um, it is information that if you're willing to share it, we will gladly share it on your behalf in a follow-up email to anyone that's registered for today. Um, and again, um, we encourage you to do that if you wish, and that could be your name, organization, email, social media, whatever way you wish people to uh, get in contact with you. Uh, so uh, again, as I mentioned off the top, our Entrepreneur Ecosystem Coffee Break is on behalf of Navigate Small Business. So on behalf of Allison Rowe, who is the manager at Navigate, I'm just going to do a little intro uh, to what Navigate is all about and then we will get into um, introductions and allowing you folks to highlight your organizations. So Navigate is um, an organization that supports entrepreneurs from early startup all the way up through uh, commercialization. It is a partnership between Grenfell and the College of North Atlantic in Cornerbrook, and they are located actually at both campuses. So they have three pillars um, that they provide supports with. So the Entrepreneurship Center is both at the College of the North Atlantic in Cornerbrook, as well as on Grenfell campus in Cornerbrook. The makerspace is on Grenfell campus, and the business incubator is on the College of the North Atlantic site. Uh, all of these centers are currently closed to drop in or visits as the campuses are closed. Uh, however, I know when Allison is looking forward to September when it appears that um, some of the Centers will be able to open or might be able to do some drop-ins or by appointment, however that's going to look. Uh, we're still waiting for some more direction on that. But the um, Allison is available through um, email and phone, which will have her information at the end of this presentation um, to be able to reach. And they do provide, as I say, supports right now. If you've got a silly idea, to, you're wondering, is this even viable, um, all the way up to getting you into some space um, and commercializing your product or services. So they're available for support. And I can say it's a, a great support. And one of the supports through their funding is we're able to provide this entrepreneur ecosystem coffee break. Um, it's something that came out of research that said, as entrepreneurs, we thrive when we get to talk to other entrepreneurs. And I know from personal experience, when I started my business, uh, connecting with entrepreneurs at different sites and different events, and they start to talk and I'd be like, wow, I wonder if that applies to me. Do I need to worry about that? So it's really, really valuable to talk to others that have either walked the path before you or are um, um, going along the new journey with you at the same time. So I always find that is really exciting to be able to do that. So today uh, we decided that we want to give the entrepreneurs an opportunity to highlight their organizations um, and do a little bit of a 
virtual tour, so to speak. Um, and if I had artificial intelligence and I was skilled on that, I'd be throwing you a ball and asking you to throw it onto the next person. But we're going to kind of virtually do that. We're going to kind of hop across the province and um, and see what we can come up with uh, to try to highlight uh, some of the businesses. Again, I encourage you at any time to please put your contact information over in chat and we will uh, we'll follow up with that. And we'll just go through the list and we'll ask folks to, um, to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about your business, what's happening this summer uh, and that sort of thing. So Ivan, I'm gonna throw to you. I know you've got some other things on the go there in the background, but if now is a good time, do you want to jump on camera and tell us who you are and what you're about? Sure, did my camera come on correctly? Yep, you're there. Uh, so we used to be, um, and this is why I'm here, we used to be a big game hunting lodge in uh, Victoria Lake. So the name of the business is Abadec Wilderness Adventures and the proper, that's like a phonetical sort of way to spell it. Okay. The actual word is Abadagawit. And I don't know if that came through at the end, but it happens at the end of the word. Um, and so what we've done is we we sold our big game hunting licenses and the camp in Victoria Lake and brought it back home. And by home, I mean what I wrote in the chat. We are based out of Flat Bay. Okay. And what we do now is, like, Dad likes to, to create a joke out of everything. You can come and shoot with us, but it's going to be with a camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Dan is now doing um, what you can call cultural tourism for us. Dad is our dad was always our, our main guide, and now he's our only guide. And he can take you into the country uh, outside of Flat Bay or down to, uh, say, the former capital of Newfoundland in Sandy Point and show you how he experienced it as a child and how he was told his grandparents experienced these places. So basically, it's a a way for us to to pass on what we know and have experienced in this place that's the, the point of our business and due to covid um we haven't actually been operating for the last year and a half but we'd okay. like to get back to it if we could because there's no way to do the tour um at a distance you need to be with dad and six feet apart doesn't work in a side by side. You could walk to Sandy Point or walk into the woods, but it's going to be it's going to go from a three hour trip to a seven or eight hour trip. Wow, so, that's a whole different experience. <laughs> yeah, so so rather than put that on people and suggest that they come for seven or eight hours, we think that what we're going to do is create a virtual tour with my father. And so that's that's why I'm here, and that's why I want to get involved with the, especially the last one where you talked about the people with the money, because <laughs> mm -hmm. you need money to create an infrastructure to put a a virtual tour and tour in place, right? So right okay. for sure, yeah. And we've had some videographers, um, entrepreneurs certainly come on uh, as part of this uh, ecosystem, and certainly some of the funding programs are available for technology and innovation. So. Yeah, cool. you I'm, I'm a filmmaker session. myself, so I was gonna I was gonna hire a crew and direct it myself because I don't think yes. that would be comfortable if we just brought someone else in. <laughs> True, and actually, Ivan, you and I met when you interviewed my grandfather, didn't we? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. I, I knew, I, I, knew I had seen you somewhere before. <laughs> and as soon as you said you were a filmmaker yourself, I was yeah, he did that. <laughs> did the interview. Uh, so that's excellent. So you're out in Flat Bay, and um, I would think that Ivan. I know from work that I've done with Anlita, which is the Newfoundland Labrador Indigenous Tourism Association, that cultural experiences are something that people are looking for now, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's um, I don't want to say like a, a, a hot a hot topic, but it is. It's, um, and I think the, the, the thing that makes us special is my father, mm -hmm. because dad has been involved with the movement through the fact that her family was there at the beginning in the in the nineteen the late sixties early seventies, and the the community of Flat Bay the community of Flat Bay West sits at the heart of the Mi'kmaq movement outside of Con River, for the okay. simple reason that when uh, Con River recognized that there was something happening with the white paper, they sent an envoy to Flat Bay because they knew that their people were there. So they basically connected those two communities. And then my uncle Calvin and people like my father traveled the island to find everyone else that should have been connected up. 
Okay. So that that's a part of the the story that Dad likes to tell. Dad was mm -hmm. a chief in the eighties when Con River left the Federation of the Indians and became uh, of, of status reserve and the rest of the F and I had to basically uh, knuckle down and, and become a much more uh, active organization. So dad likes to tell that story, but also he'll make you fresh bread and he'll cook you salmon and, and cod or whatever he's been able to get in, in, in the days or hours before you showed up. And oh. that's a part of so since he's uh he doesn't like me saying it but he's a master woodsman he's he knows his way around like i said tours around the country in flat bay what dad considers the country in flat bay can bring you almost to Burjo, right that's that's the interior of the island he knows that and so wow. that's the point places that many of us don't even get a chance to see right because they they took the the trans canada highway and they went in a big uh, nice rainbow shape instead of the original uh, path that we took to the interior and to the to the east coast, which was through Buckins and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. down on that, across those nice those lakes were like highways, right? Right. Yeah, for sure. I know a, a family member of mine used to always say, "If you want to see Newfoundland and Labrador, you need to cross Trans Canada." <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. So, so certainly, uh, certainly there. Excellent. Well, thank you, Ivan, and thank you for bringing no us on board. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, much more about that and certainly seeing the virtual piece. But I do think, um, I'm fingers crossed, I do think that we're going to get back to being able to get in a side by side with your dad and, I would and love that. explore <laughs> um, as as we all move through and, and what is it they say, learn to live with COVID because it's not going away. It's still going to be here, but we need to live exactly. with it. Exactly. And thank you and, and for like making this platform and navigate a CNA and, and Grenfell. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I think they've been a great support to all of us. Um, Hannah, I'm going to throw to you. I'm going to kind of come up, and I think you're you're going from one bay to another bay. <laughs> yes, I am. So we are down in Benoit's Cove, um, exactly on the water, the front of the building. We have a patio here. You can kind of sit out and view all kinds of different things. Um, we from our platform here, we have a restaurant where you can get some fresh fish or your salad, all the courting. Um, we have kayak tours, zodiac tours, hiking tours into the Borneo Mountains. Um, our zodiac tours focus out on our Humber Arm, and we also go to Woods Island, which is a resettled community, which we're working on more building this and building a stage to bring the culture also this side of us. Okay. So Hannah, just for others to know, you're with Saltbox and then there's the other arm of your business, I, right? Yeah, it's Saltbox and Ever Outdoor Adventures. So Saltbox is the, like our so-called restaurant and then the Ever Outdoor Adventures is where we're promoting our people to move outdoors and see what Newfoundland has to offer. And so Rob contacted me earlier in the week and said you were in a kayak tour this morning. So I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, we did a kayak tour this morning. And then there's one again this evening at seven. My uh, so. aunt has a sea kayak up at my parents' place just outside of Pasadena. And it's just been a little too windy. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not comfortable going out in the wind, even though it's a sea <laughs> kayak on Deer Lake, because Deer Lake can change in heartbeat. So I uh, absolutely I get uh, I get a little nervous with that. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I love being in the kayak. Yeah. So I will tell you oh, that my yeah, daughter absolutely. and I, with the pandemic, have been doing a uh, fries and gravy tour of the province wherever we go, and Salt oh, okay. is in our top three. So I'll do a plug for your oh, perfect. Your fries and gravy. You're, you're slightly edged out right now, and we just did the Irish, part of the Irish Loop on the uh, Avalon, and there's a place down there that has pretty awesome ones too. <laughs> but, oh, okay. <laughs> but Salt okay, fries yeah. are up there for sure. So for anyone who wants to be tempted to go okay. down the bay, Let's go this from, way. yep, there you go. Wants to be tempted to go down the bay from Cornerbrook, do you have to go head down to Benoit's Cove or BC, as we say, and uh, mm -hmm. that's your view for your having your plate of fries and gravy. Awesome, thank you, Hannah. So happy to have you join us. You're um, very welcome. <laughs> I was hoping we'd get you on the kayak, but I understand the uh, logistics of possibly leaving your phone in the bay. You don't want to be doing that. 
Yeah, no, we came in a little early just because the wind started to pick up. Mm -hmm. So we had to look after the safety aspect of everything as well. Absolutely. So make sure, Hannah, you put some contact info in the chat for us so that people can we'll uh, do, yeah. find out about your tours and so on. Excellent. Perfect, sure. Um, Terry Lynn's just popped on. I'm, I'm kind of doing a little geography thing here. So I've gone out from Flat Bay to Benoit's Cove. Now I'm going to head up to Deer Lake if Terry Lynn's available at the moment. There she is. Hi. Hi. Can you guys hear me and see me okay? Yep. Awesome. Terry Lynn's, Terry Lynn's going to tell us who she is, where she is, and take us on a tour. <laughs> All right. So I'm Terry Lynn Robbins, and my husband and I own Robbins Family Farm in Deer Lake. So we have, we are a multi-commodity farm, and I guess we're most famously known for our petting farm and our children's programs. We currently have farm camp for kids happening today. Um, I'm going to turn my camera around here, if I can figure it out. There you go. There. And of course, everybody knows us from the truck as well. So here at our farm, we do a little bit of everything. So this time of year, we're busy planting and growing and, and we have the petting farm. We tell everybody when they come to visit our farm here in Deer Lake that whether you're three or 93, some of our animals we raise as pets and some of them we raise for food. But we love our food as much as we love our pets. So everybody lives the same life here. Everybody gets lots of love and attention and lots, lots of snuggles and cuddles. And um, we always tell everybody that the, the love makes them taste better. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So this is this is our our antique truck that we found in the woods behind our house when we first bought the property 10 years ago and it has become uh, quite famous. We have lots of photographers that come here for pictures and we lots of people like to stop. It's been featured on the weather network. I apologize for the wind if you can hear it in my headset. <laughs> Um, and so this year, new to us, we also are trialing a small pumpkin patch. So that's what you see right behind the truck happening right there. Okay. And we have about two and a half acres in production this year, which is also new for us. Um, so we're growing lots of different lettuces and kales and, and um, turnips and cabbage and carrots and potatoes and lots and lots of tomatoes, zucchinis, pumpkins, oh my goodness, lots of herbs, all kinds of different things. Over here you'll see um, we we tripled production on everything this year, not just our veggie production, but our animal production as well. So we have 24 goats. So right over here, this is what we're calling our milking herd. So our future goal is to be milking our goats and um, producing some soaps, lotions, and hopefully at some point, some cheeses. So I'm gonna flip the camera a little bit here and take you on the, a quick little walk over to the front of the greenhouse and the front of the barn. I've left the kids at farm camp in with uh, Farmer Bill and our summer staff. <laughs> <laughs> and so here we go. There. So this is the front of our greenhouse and farm camp central in the in the front. And then beyond there is we have lots of veggies and stuff happening. Oh, actually, I'd like to show you something really quick. I'll walk in here really quick. Because one of the wonderful things about farm cam is the baby, the baby chicks and the baby ducks. And so right in here, these are our baby ducks. Oh, sweet. They're pretty cute. <laughs> that's a, that's just a little quick sneak peek. <laughs> so one of oh. the one of the things, Terry Lynn, you you used to be more of a flower. Uh, we did farm, and you completely pivoted during the pandemic, didn't you? Oh. We did. Oh, yeah, you're back. Just, oh, okay. I'm just trying to <laughs> switch my screen. There we go. We did. So the pandemic showed us that um, we didn't want to grow flowers anymore. So those are my nice, beautiful cherry tomatoes, my tumbler tomatoes. Um, 
So we, uh, so we decided to focus on food production only. And in doing that, we decided no more flowers. We're growing food only. Um, we grow flowers just to decorate the farm, but for the most part, we are growing lots of veggies, as I said, and we also have the animals. So we currently have 17 beef cattle in our herd. We have 24 goats in total, and when some of our goats we raise for pets and some of them are for food production. We raise lambs as well, and we have pigs. We have pet pigs and pigs that we raise for bacon. And um, we have laying hens as well. We, our laying hens produce about 85 eggs a day. And um, I'm just gonna turn you around again here. So these are some of our lambs. <laughs> Hi, buddy. So these are Shropshire lambs. You might recognize them, Carol. They're from Rodney's farm at Exploits Meadows. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and then we also, we also have our farm camp. So this is our fourth year doing farm camp for kids. Hi. Everybody can wave. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so this is called the Farmers in Training Farm Camps Day Camp. And um, it's a whole lot of fun. The kids learn all about where their food comes from. That's fantastic. Excellent. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. Our, far, our petting farm is open on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the evenings from 5 to 8. And then on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays from 10 till 4. Perfect. And do you still need to yeah. make appointments for that, Terry Lynn, or are you able to drop in now? Um, for right now, we're going to keep the appointment system just because we're still required for contact tracing. So, mm -hmm. and it, it, it just helps us with crowd control. So appointments are really the best way to go right now for us. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of camp to uh, join us. Make sure you put your contact info in chat for me. And then we'll I will. in the follow-up. Um, and thank you to all the kitties for waving at us, both uh, goats and human. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's thanks awesome. so much. Thank you. Um, all right, you guys take care. Thanks for having me, bye. Okay, bye. Uh, Priya, I'm going to jump to you, even though physically you're not in Deer Lake, but I know you're connected to Deer Lake, so I'm going to uh, give you an opportunity to say hello and let folks know who you are and what you're at. Well, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Priya Windsor, and I am the owner and operator of Compass Chocolates. So we just launched this past fall. Launching in a pandemic is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my connection to the West Coast is that's where my husband's family is from. Um, so he's born and raised in Deer Lake and his parents still live there. Uh, so yeah, just another newfie trying to make our way back home, I guess. <laughs> my business focuses on um, high quality uh, craft chocolate and bonbons and other treats. And um, just bringing flavors from home and around the world in through this delicious medium which most people like maybe you're a little picky of an eater and you're afraid to try new things but put it in a chocolate and maybe not so much <laughs> true yeah, that it's, it's a fun yeah. business and uh lots of lots of learning still um available i love the idea of connecting with local farms and local uh, food growers and kind of presenting their ingredients in a new and exciting way mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Well, so happy you can join us. For those who don't know, Priya is actually out in mountain time. So as she said, she's trying to get back home to the West Coast and connect with others. So thank you for joining us so bright and early for where you are. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. All right. I'm going to move across to Vicki. You're over in Central. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so I'm Vicki Nee. I'm actually a Clarity and Life coach. I work... Um, from here, from this office, so. <laughs> so that's your tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the tour. <laughs> yeah, basically my, my uh, services cover helping professionals um, get through a hump, get through a, a block of some type and uh, getting them to a clarity position. So 
I, I incorporated different different uh, types of techniques, um, behavioral therapy, you know, uh, deep dive questioning, um, a little bit of talk therapy, you know, um, whatever is really required. I've been studying quite a bit for the last number of years, and uh, love it because I really I just like helping people. I, you know, and it's been asked, oh, are you a business coach or are you a life coach? And I will challenge any business owner to show me where their life starts and their business ends. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so really you need to have that whole combo. And, and of course my clients direct the, the direction of our conversations and the problem uh, problems that they want to address at that time. So, okay. Anyway, excellent. Well, thank you so much for jumping on with I us today. My information in the in the chat. So if somebody mm -hmm. wants to get a hold of me, um, love to have a chat with them. No obligation and no requirement. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, Neil, I'm going to jump to you. What are you at these days? Sure. Um, so I'm involved with uh, two startups. I'm in, I'm in Cornerbrook, and you know, with the pandemic, it allows us to work remotely so both of these startups are in st john's so like this is kind of what the it's just like a really bad prototype of one of the things okay. um yeah so in, anything tech related if anybody wants any tech related talk to me otherwise yeah that's it not not that exciting um <laughs> I, I i can't reveal too much about two startups because there's you know uh, there's, it's still in startup phase and yeah, we, we still need to uh, possible patents and those kinds of things. You're you're fading in and out a little bit. Uh, can you guys hear me better like this? I've, I've got yeah, that's a little bit better. So you yeah, so, you work with startups, yeah. do you, Neil? That's correct. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm involved with, with two uh, tech startups. Some tech startups. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So if you're needing some tech support, Neil might be the gentleman to reach out um i just want to make sure i think i've got all our entrepreneurs covered uh so i'm going to head up to the northern peninsula richard and bobby are joining us richard do you want to tell us what's going on up in your area of the woods who you are and what's on the go we are uh, a community business development corporation north Tip development corporation we provide business development services on the great northern peninsula um, that would be from Norris Point on the north. Um, these days, business activity seems to be fairly uncertain. Mm -hmm. Businesses are being pretty cautious. We're not seeing any or very few new startups. Okay. The uh, existing businesses are just trying to do their best to survive. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the same thing everywhere, really, but uh, we have a very small market, which makes it uh, a lot harder for retail and service businesses. Mm -hmm. Are you starting to see a few things open up, though, on the Northern Peninsula, Richard? Yeah, I, I can see that, but there's already been a big change in traffic since the, the 1st of July. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, that'll be better. There's still a fair number of restaurants that are not open. Uh, and maybe in a little while they'll see there's enough demand to open, mm -hmm. um, which would be good. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Lexi, I think on that note, I'll turn to you if I could. Um, if you want to let folks know who you are and maybe from your perspective, what you're hearing from uh, your tourism operators. Ah, my webcam works and there I'm unmuted. You're unmuted. I might, need, I might need Neil's help with tech solutions or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not uh, so used to this go to uh, meeting uh, platform. So, excuse me for not having my camera on earlier. That's so, okay. I'm Lexi, McKen I'm Lexi McKenzie. I'm the executive director of Go Western Newfoundland, which is the Western Destination Management Organization. A bit of a mouthful. I didn't even try it, but I do have my West Coast West Coast shirt on today, which is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, our uniform here uh, at the office. So I'm located physically in Corner Brook, our office uh, and staff of three, uh, well, four right now because we have summer students, is here in Corner Brook. 
uh, at the Commerce Court building, stop by and visit us. Mm -hmm. um, but our region uh, would be right from St. Anthony on the Great Northern Peninsula and surround, uh, back down to Port of Ask and out as far as about Route 420, uh, White Bay South really is what we, um, kind of the area that we manage. So we're okay. tourism, marketing, destination development and market readiness, largely concentrated on all of uh, those three lines of business. Core funded by the Department of Tourism, uh, supported uh, by the Department of IET and ACOA as well. Um, so that's a, a little bit about who we are. Uh, normally, uh, of course, uh, things are very different in tourism. Normally, we'd be all really focused heavily on non-resident marketing, um, trade shows um, and consumer shows, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been really different over the last 18 months for everyone, um, but um, starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel, like even hosting a few familiarization tours here in Western Newfoundland which is great to get some people here experiencing what we have to offer here so mm -hmm. yeah and are you hearing from operators that things are there's some hope is things just kind of building in the right direction yeah so um, we gather every two weeks uh, provincially uh, with a whole bunch of partners across the province um, transportation providers, airlines, airports, uh, the whole uh, the whole crew gets together every two weeks uh, since the pandemic has started just to share. So mm -hmm. yesterday we had an update meeting. I, I do some survey work just to try to get a, a handle on how numbers are looking right now. Uh, certainly much better than 2020. Don't know if that comparison is <laughs> great mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, by comparison to 2019, we're, we're, we're nowhere near yet. But we are, you know, at Deer Lake Airport, we're back to about 60% of the flights that we would have had in, in 2019. Mm -hmm. That's even maybe a little bit better than our East Coast friends in, in St. John's. So flights have been performing well. Um, and routes are doing pretty good with Green Atlantic as well. So visitors, we do have a few visitors. I think since we've opened up July 1st, um, on the NewfoundlandandLabrador.com website uh, chats with travel uh, travel support staff have doubled since July okay. 1st uh, and we've seen uh, like a triple in the calls to the um, uh, itinerary support uh, uh, phone line. So that still shows that um, there's a, a great interest in Newfoundland and Labrador as a destination. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly still pretty quiet, but hopefully most businesses I'm talking to are seeing an increase in um, in phone calls and inquiries, mm -hmm. uh, especially August on. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we're seeing probably a bit of family and friends coming home, reuniting with mom and dad, and that's great. They'll eat in restaurants, hopefully, maybe sneak off for a night at a hotel, something like that. Um, but uh, uh, certainly, uh, you know, a, a vacation visitor might wait until uh, a bit of the messiness and we all figure out travel forms and what does it mm -hmm. feel like to get through. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll have a strong fall. Uh, we've always uh, done a fall marketing campaign from the Department of Tourism uh, and has been successful. So hopefully we'll have a strong fall as well for our operators. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know uh, I have an aunt and uncle arrived Monday, a cousin arrived yesterday, and my daughter's coming next month, which we haven't seen in, in 18 months, so we're so excited to see her. And they're all doing, you know, they're bringing people with them, so they're doing staycation yeah. stuff, you know, or it might just be day trip from the West Coast. There's so much to do from here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's exciting to see that. Um, yeah, it's exciting to see that, uh, you know, I think uh, for those who haven't been home for a while, we'll, uh, we, you know, we'll still see aunts and uncles and moms and dads and everybody go out to eat together and mm -hmm. do experiences together. So that's, that's great. Uh, so hopefully that all transfers uh, over to a to a, a fairly decent summer and then to a real strong 2022. Mm -hmm. um, we are hearing some real concerns, but it's nationally, so not a lot that could be done provincially right now, although we are having conversations. Um, car rentals. Mm. We just checked for a fam tour uh, and the earliest one we could get was um, late July. Wow. Yeah. So wow. that's a bummer because most people who would come here as a vacation visitor 
would need to, we don't have the transportation links to be able to do uh, our island without a rental car. So most people mm -hmm. would look uh, for a rental for sure. So, but uh, lots of lots of folks working on those things too. But there is con that's happening nationally. So not just here in Newfoundland and mm -hmm. Labrador. A lot of those were sold off during pandemic. Yeah, and we've we've had that challenge in the past too, pre-pandemic about yeah. rentals. Well, it's funny because we've, uh, I actually called uh, or I sent a text to uh, Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador, one of my colleagues over there and just said, I'm hearing uh, just a few concerns about car rentals. And he, and he kind of joked at first, not knowing it was an actual issue. He said, oh my gosh, if we could go back to car rental issues uh, instead of pandemic, he'd be, he'd be happy <laughs> to start working on those files, uh, but not so much when it comes to things uh, now. He's like, okay, no. Uh, I'd rather if we didn't have these problems uh, yeah, right now. Yeah, but, for sure. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know some of it is uh, maybe we need Neil's little gadget that he showed there because some of it is parts that to produce new vehicles. Yeah, um, the microchip thing is what uh, mm -hmm. we've heard nationally is is cutting down on vehicle production. So yeah, Neil, if you can help any. <laughs> New startup for Neil, parts for cars. Yeah, um, being tangentially involved in like uh, needing hard drive space. Yeah, <laughs> there's a definite chip issue in the world. Because okay. okay. when your hard drive was $98 for a, a terabyte last year and it's $240, it like, well, after, after summer last year, it went up like four times. Wow. <laughs> wow. And I think the other thing people will find when they get to the island and put try to gas up that car. What a sticker shock we're in right now, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, we do, I should say, um, we did produce a Go Visit Western Newfoundland booklet this year. Um, uh, we mail dropped it to our friends in St. John's and in, in Lab West uh, to try to encourage them to come to Western Newfoundland. It is on our website, gowesternnewfoundland.com. You can download it, share it with your frontline staff, great planning tools, resource tools, if, if folks are wondering what to do when they're doing day trips to certain areas. Okay, excellent, oh yeah, perfect. That's why we got you on today. Awesome, um, I'm gonna go to Carla and then Betty, you're both with the same organization, but if you wanna let us know where you are and what you're at. We'll go Carla first. Great, sorry about that. Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carla May. I work with ENLO, which is Newfoundland and Labrador Organization of Women Entrepreneurs. We provide uh, business support to women um, right across the province. I am the West Coast Region Business Startup Advisor, and I'm based in Cornerbrook. We help women with whatever they may need other than financing. <laughs> I like to put that part, little part in there. Uh, so very similar to services that Navigate offers, we like to work uh, you know, in conjunction with Navigate that helps support uh, women start their businesses and grow. Excellent. Huge help to me, I can tell you that. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us on, uh, Carol. My pleasure. Betty. Betty. Good morning from Labrador. I'm on the south coast of Labrador in Port Hope Simpson. I work with Enlo as well as Carla. Um, so I'm happy she's my coworker. We chat every now and then with regard to business. Um, so I am the business startup advisor in the Labrador region. So any woman who's interested in starting a business in Labrador, I'm here to assist free of charge and it's confidential. Absolutely. So Carla and Betty, what are you seeing in the last uh, few months? Are you seeing a change in people approaching you as startups? At Enlo, we're seeing lots of positive uh, movement. A lot of new clients coming in, some new businesses starting up, a lot of new interests. We're seeing a, a real uh, revival of interest in business. It's okay. excellent. Yeah, excellent. we're very and excited. Betty, and Betty, what about Labrador? What are you seeing up in Labrador? Um, so there was a number of clients who was in the process of starting a business and then COVID hit. Uh, some of them due to medical reasons and stuff like that definitely shied away. They were working on their business plan and stuff like that. Uh, now we're starting to see people, first words that come to mind is come out of the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're seeing a few people now who start, is, who's interested in starting up their business and starting to get on the go and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. One day this week when it was too hot to cook, as we don't have air conditioning here and I work from home, uh, 
we decided to order out from we only have two places in Port Hope Simpson to eat one is the hotel and the other is a place called Camel's Place and uh, so we decided to order out for the very first time I was present pleasantly surprised and happy to see when I went over to get my order people were the parking lot was filled although it's kind of only a small parking lot but that was filled and there was vehicles out on the road so lots awesome. of people were there and that was nice to see because I hadn't seen that in a long long time so mm -hmm. thing, people are starting to get on the move and it's nice to see still a little bit hesitant uh with mm -hmm. regard to COVID and people coming in and stuff like that but it's still it's hopeful and looks like it's starting to get back to normal which is a really good thing mm -hmm. good to hear good to hear um skipping out to the port of port andrew um hi everybody uh my name is andrew hibbets and uh i work with red a tnl and uh, red a tnl is a bilingual economic development organization here in newfoundland and labrador uh, so the tnl being terra nova labrador um so we have an office in st john's we have an office in mainland um and so mainland on the port of port peninsula not to be confused with mainland Canada, of course. And uh, <laughs> we have an office in Lab City as well. Um, so basically, our lines of business are tourism, immigration, um, entrepreneurship, and employability. And uh, at Red A, I wear two different hats. Um, so I'm an economic development officer for the West Coast. But I'm also a tourism development officer, and that's what a provincial focus. So um, basically handling all the French advertising for Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, so when you go to NewfoundlandLabrador.com, the, the provincial tourism website, and you click Francais up in the top, and it redirects you over to our website, exploretnl.ca. And we also put out the, the provincial um, traveler's guide in French. Um, and usually comes out every two years. Um, this year, or this would have been its second year, um, and it looks like it might actually get a third year of life just because we didn't use as many copies as, uh, you know, with the mm -hmm. pandemic and whatnot. And uh, I think for the most part, everything is up to date. So, uh, so it looks like it's going to get a third year of life. Um, in terms of tourism and what I'm hearing from tourists, I'm getting a lot of inquiries. Um, actually, thank God I have an assistant helping me because it would be too much for one person uh, to try and juggle all the other stuff I'm supposed to do and respond to tourist and top inquiries. I'm getting a lot from Quebec. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they're equally as interested in Labrador as they are uh, the island. Um, you know, lots of travel inquiries asking. Usually the same question is, are we permitted to enter? Um, mm -hmm. And um, other than that, uh, you know, asking about tours and, and whatnot and bike routes and, and, and then the technicalities and trying to keep up on all that information, I can tell you, is quite a um, a mission so i always reach out to partners like go western and that like so we can try and keep each other informed as it involves as it evolves mm -hmm. um, because there's just so much to remember and it changes so rapidly um i also want to give a little shout out to um the friendly invasion which i'm involved with mm -hmm. um so i'm on the board of directors with the stephen will cultural destination committee and that's the organization that um organizes the friendly invasion festival that happens here in the stephen will area every summer and it did happen last year even though with the pandemic and stuff um as I was going ahead this year, and we got lots of great events planned. You mm -hmm. can see the full schedule at stephenbillheritage.ca, and I'll pop that in the chat after. Okay. Um, so that's our official website. And when you go there, right on the landing page, right on the homepage, you'll see the, the events. And the, the tickets can be purchased um, through there. Um, you know, with the, there's links to the Eventbrite pages that you can, uh, you can purchase tickets. So really great. We got travel packages too, if you're interested in staying overnight. Um, so there's a link on the website to that as well. So that's to try and help our, our local hoteliers and, you know, and tour operators and trying to package together something that everybody, it's a win-win for everybody. 
Mm-hmm. And um, and of course, follow our social media. I will say our Facebook is probably the most active. We use Instagram as a secondary social media, you know, presence. But um, our Facebook is where it's at, <laughs> um, okay. and we're the friendly invasion on Facebook. Okay, put it in chat for us, uh, Andrew, when you get a moment after, and I'll make sure it gets sent out. Okay, perfect. And Thank the friendly you. invasion is that that's connected to the heritage of the airline and the base and all that kind of stuff too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Originally, it was um, they the concept of it was you know the military base and kind of celebrating the American influence and heritage and how the friendly invasion of so many Americans into Stephenville like changed the you know cultural landscape of the town. Um, I wouldn't even exist if <laughs> the base wasn't here. So, um, and that's a tragedy. No, I'm joking. Um, but, um, um, <clears throat> but we've, uh, the reason why Red A is involved is because we're trying to also tell the story of the Acadians that were here before um, that, you know, friendly invasion of Americans. So, I don't know if you've ever heard of Back of the Pond. There's actually a book you can purchase, um, and it's usually in like, um, you know, stores, souvenir stores around Newfoundland. Um, and it tells the story of the Acadians that lived um, around uh, Stephenville Pond. So, that would be where the old Abitibi Mill was and where the runway is today. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, and uh, obviously had a huge impact, you know, and uh, most assimilated, but uh, there's still that, you know, presence there. So we're trying to install um, more storyboards and in French as well, um, telling that story. So uh, when you go around Steve Moe's Heritage Trail, um, you can stop at little locations. There's little... Um, like little pillars, I guess, with a, a number on it. And then there's like storyboards. So like, for example, one is by, you know, the the jet there. That's up mm-hmm. on the, you know, uh, that's up on uh, base area. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, there's a few sites like that all over town. There's one over by Blanche Brook and, uh, you know, um, little sites. So we're just trying to develop that more, make people more aware that it's there and uh, add to it. So. Um, we're hoping in the near future we're going to have some storyboards that'll tell you about the Acadian people that were around in the area before. So, yeah. just think of that. I could head towards Stephenville. I could learn about the American invasion, the Acadians. Zip on down to Ivan's dad. Learn about the Mi'kmaq land, all in uh, kind of fairly close proximity, and and have quite a cultural tour. Holy, that's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and I got to say too, the uh, that's uh, another thing to uh, an important point. Um, the friendly invasion is like open to try and like you know trying to celebrate all the different heritage in the area, whether it's indigenous, Scottish, uh, you know, uh, French, Acadian, um, you mm-hmm. know, American. Um, we're just such a beautiful blend of all these different cultures that we have to celebrate it, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I, I'm chairperson of the Heritage Society in Pasadena, so I'm always interested in the heritage aspect. And, you know, everyone came from somewhere, uh, mm-hmm. you know, on the West Coast. It's, it's, it's you know, we have the, the Indigenous and the Acadian, yes, but the rest of us, we all came from somewhere into that community and into these areas. So I think that's really, really cool. Ivan, did you want to jump in on this one? Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to ask Andrew when the next meeting was at her board so I could come. <laughs> okay, um, I'll check my Outlook calendar and I'll let you know. Cool. Yeah, that would be great, Ivan. And yeah, um, yeah um, I'm also chair of the marketing committee, so I don't know if you wanted to attend those meetings, but you're welcome to attend those as well. Cool. And uh, and the Heritage Trail, for that matter, that's another committee. I'm super involved with this organization. <laughs> you were super involved when we went to when we went to college. We, you were super involved, bro. That's... Um, thanks. <laughs> yeah, um, that's me that's not awesome. knowing my limit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also, just to kind of draw on some of the events we got going on, and I'm just kind of looking over this way at my other monitor. Um, so. Uh, there's bonfire music on the beach that's free um, and there's a few evenings like that so like music and sitting around on the beach um, you know there's something to do during the week um, we got uh, guided tours um, so 
Harmon Historic Walking Tour and um, a tour of the fossil bed. Um, the official dates for the festival are July 16th to August 2nd, but there are a couple of events that fall outside of that. Okay. Um, the last Christmas at Harmon is sold out, it sold very quickly, um, but uh, barbecue, a five course menu, um, that's an event that's almost sold out, but if you're interested, I encourage you to, uh, to and we got music at the dome and also um, I'm not sure if people are familiar um, with the, the area, but like downtown Stephenville, um, right across from the food center, there was a building there that burned down years ago and the town recently put in a new town square. Um, we haven't been able to do anything with it because it's just been uh, recently construct constructed and there's been COVID re regulations and whatnot, but uh, but now um, we're actually having uh, music in the square one night. Um, oh, cool. And uh, that's going to be really nice too. And, uh, and I should mention that, you know, COVID regulations will be follow followed and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And we're, you know, we're organizing it so it's safe or whatever. But uh, there's some fun stuff. And uh, I guess COVID has kind of uh, forced us all to find creative ways uh, to, to have fun events, but be safe at the same time. And uh, yeah, uh, Night at the Museum is another one, um, a car show. Um, so yeah, there's lots of stuff. Um, Excellent. Check it out. Excellent. I always feel an affinity for Stephenville because my grandfather, who actually died when my mom was 11, but he built the base. He was a carpenter. And him and my great uncle um, commuted from Pasadena into Stephenville for weeks at a time. So. Talk about turnarounds, this was back a long time ago. It was just as much as going out west because it was, you know, a couple hours away, nobody had cars and that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But he was, uh, him and my great uncle were carpenters that built the American base. So uh, I was kind of having an affinity when I go into Steamville area. <laughs> okay, but yeah, nice. <laughs> Even though I didn't meet him, but it was, it was part of my heritage. And then he also built the homes in Pasadena. So uh, um, he was from Jamestown area out west. Um, I think I've run through everyone, so I'm just going to um, resume the uh, presentation for just a moment to cover off on a couple things, and then I'll open it up if anybody has any last comments. Um, so we do have our next Entrepreneur Coffee Break uh, happening the end of the summer. As I said, we kind of wanted to book in the summer. Uh, so August 31st, registration is open. I'll, um, I'll send that link out in the follow-up email uh, for registration. If you are hosting an event of any kind, uh, tag Navigate. Allison and her team are fantastic at sharing and promoting us entrepreneurs and what we're doing. Um, so if you think there's something that uh, would be interest to entrepreneurs or, or just generally to on the tourism side, for those of us that live here and work here, um, then please feel free to tag Navigate and Allison will make sure that that gets shared out on their social media as well. Um, Navigate does have a new website. Well, we're still calling it new, I guess it's within the last year. Um, and within that, there's a business directory. And in the business directory, you can be listed for free. Um, just send Allison, there's her email address there. Uh, just send her your logo, your name, business name, uh, contact information, and it'll be listed. And you can, if you go on their website and check out the resources section, you'll see a number uh, of the entrepreneurs that attend and the support agencies are in there as well. Um, and that's no charge to businesses. And Lexi, I want to throw it to you because I just saw a post yesterday on social media. I think you folks have a directory as well, right? If you're there. Lexi, if you are there, just unmute. She may have stepped away. So I did see on uh, social media that Go Western Newfoundland and Labrador, if you're a tourism operator, uh, they have a free, you can have a free listing in their directory as well. So just uh, uh, connect with Lexi and her contact info I saw is over in chat. And then um, encourage you to continue to stay connected to us so you can follow uh, Navigate on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. There's a mailing list. Um, I have a mailing list in social media as well. So somehow you'll find out about our events uh, through that if you wish to stay connected. 
So I will thank everyone for their time, but I'm going to throw it back to everyone. Is there any, are there any last uh, comments or anything else that you'd like to say that you maybe didn't say earlier? Make sure you put your information in chat so that we can uh, send that out to folks. For anyone who's still left here, uh, outside of my business, I'm also a, a sort of a, an art, art networker and, and creator in that space. And I'm doing a festival within a festival with Theatre Newfoundland Labrador and Cowhead at the end of August. So if anyone wanted to show up at Cowhead from the 27th to the 29th, I'll have a, a special sharing perspectives festival going on there. Oh, excellent. Okay. That's what it's all about, finding out those opportunities of things we can do in the summer. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Any other last comments from anyone? All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. And I wish you all the well in the summer and hope that your ventures are very, very successful. And we hope that you can join us the end of August to let us know how it went. August uh, Coffee Break is going to focus on back to business. So back to school is in September. Um, it's kind of that, I don't know, psychological almost new year again, where we kind of get into routines and things. And we're interested in exploring a conversation of um, what does back to business look like? So what, you know, things are going to change hopefully by September with some of the COVID protocols. Uh, but will things like curbside pickup continue? Um, you know, what are some of the things that you're doing in your in your businesses um, or what are some of the things that you're seeing from your clients that maybe you will continue uh, and what will what will kind of September onward look like. So that's going to be our focus in the end of August. So have a fantastic summer, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today and I wish you all the best. Take care. Thank you.